Hello, and welcome to the Niche Podcast for Friday, June 7th, 2013. I'm Jonathan Stark. And I'm Kelly Shaver. And we're here to talk about building apps that run everywhere. This week, we don't just talk about building apps that run everywhere. We show you. Kelly is going to build a REST API with Ruby on Rails. I'm going to ask stupid questions while she does it. And we're going to post video of the whole thing for you to enjoy in your copious free time. Please stay tuned. The Niche Podcast is next. <laughs> we'll muddle through. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Or turn out horrible either way. It'll be fun either way. It might turn out horrible. But yeah. if, if you're not happy with it, dear listener, uh, you can send us your address and we will give you your money back. <laughs> or something else. Yes. So this week, yes, we're finally going to do a little bit of show and tell. And uh, <clears throat> so if you're just listening to this on audio, be aware that there's a video version of it that you can uh, dial into by visiting the niche, uh, niche.cc. And that will take you to episode 60, and you can find the links there. It'll be on YouTube somewhere. Um, so for... Let's see. So the plan is that we're recording audio and recording video of Kelly's desktop, which I am watching. And then we'll marry those things up later, and hopefully everything will come together. Okay, so uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, Kelly, I can yes. see your desktop, and I see that you have uh, Happy Docs pulled up, and you're pointed yes, at I the do. Kilo documentation. I do, because that's what we're going to build. Yes. You want to tell everyone what Kilo is? Uh, yeah, it's just um, it's a, it's well, it's your project, isn't it? It's a, just like a simple calorie tracker. Yeah, it's like the simple. Super, it's almost like the simple, right? It might as well be a to do list. It's like the hello world of API. Yeah. So you you yeah. basically it's just some place you can put in your make simple entries of like calories or that you that you ate. Yeah, and we've we've not built we've we've been meaning to do it for a while, and you know maybe we can actually turn it into something after this, and you can use that killer donut icon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully. So yeah, so the basic concept is um, yeah the main piece. What are you think we're going to build? Are we going to be able to do entries and accounts and authentication and stuff, or do you think just uh, entries to start off and then tack accounts on after or what? Um, I think we can probably do all three, but I would start with accounts first and then do entries. Cool. That makes sense anyway because sure. accounts is yeah. pretty general. Yeah. Yeah. So the concept is you, you have an account, you log in, and uh, you create entries. So the two main objects are accounts and entries, and uh, we'll start off with accounts. Yes. Okay. Well, you had did you have some questions to begin with about um uh some setup setup yeah. type stuff? Yeah, I think it's worth at least uh giving people throwing people a rope in terms of uh how to get their computer set up. And of course we're both Mac people, so we we're very Mac centric. And I know you came across a really good blog post recently for setting up a Mac for Ruby on Rails development. So Yes. Let's share that with the dear listener. And it is around here somewhere. There it is. And we will, of course, link to it in the show notes so you don't need to try and copy the URL from the video. But it takes you through everything from uh, command line tools, homebrew, installing Ruby, and install Bundler, and then Rails. And um, like a, a basic, simple Rails app. And if you are like John and I and don't want to install Xcode because... You hate Xcode, <laughs> and you don't have five hours for it to download. Yeah, it my my connection was slow the other night, and it literally took me like nine hours to download it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you can you can grab just the command line tools from uh, the Apple Developer downloads. Excellent, good to know. Of course, you have to right be there. an Apple developer to log into this area of the site, but. Um, actually, I was able to log in with just my with my Apple ID, and I don't think I've paid like the like the paid paid developer account thing. That's cool. Yeah, I don't I th think I have one of those. So yeah, I think you're right, but you do have to create an account. Yeah, yeah, you do have to have yeah an Apple ID. 
cool. All right, so that's good. Yeah, and that's a big time saver. Just get the command line tools. Yeah. Yeah, um, I wish I'd done that, but <laughs> Yeah, I've got this like wimpy little uh, MacBook Air 11 11 inch, which I specifically do not have Xcode on because it doesn't fit on my remaining hard right. drive space. So, all right, cool. So, um, so this is documentation on Happy Docs. If it's not public now, I'll probably make it public. Uh, just so yeah, I can... think I think it is, but I do have to update it. And I remember I was telling you that these were extremely close. <laughs> I yeah. just realized, um, in like I I ran through this beforehand, and um, I think it kind of makes more sense to change accounts to people. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, so yeah, so I if you, it to if you see this model. later, it might be accounts, it might be people, but that's the it's a synonymous concept. Yeah. All right, so um, assuming you've gone through this blog post and you're all set up, as Ke- I know Kelly is on her brand new shiny iMac. Yes, it's 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 so pretty. <laughs> Jealous. It's so much faster. Raging jealousy. Yes. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, so so what's the first thing you do? Uh, the first thing I do is we generate a new Rails app. All right, so we're at the command line. Yes. And there's going to be a lot of command line, I'm sure, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're at the command I line. I remember that correctly. Um, what? <laughs> if you're listening long at home. <laughs> what in the world? Are you sure you have Rails installed or just Ruby? <laughs> I tell you what, you know, I'm uh, the only work I've done on this since I set it up is on Rails app, apps that I already have um, generated, and um, they have Rails, like Rails included. Uh, so yeah, that makes sense. This is good though because I like to me honestly the setup is the worst part. Yeah, this that's, is that's where you need freaking taking help. forever, though. That's all right. That's life. Yeah, it's not. I've done this before and had this. It, it, the, when you do gem install Rails, it thinks for a long time before it starts yeah. doing anything. Yeah, well, now, what do you have crazy. going on here with this split window thing? Uh, I'm using iTerm, too. I decided to give it a try. Mm-hmm. Um, when I set up the set up the iMac, the new iMac, and I like it. I, I you can still do the, um, you know, the the tabs, just as you would. So, but what like what is it? It's like term. It's like it's a two, yeah, it's a terminal replacement. Right, but it's like, what's the usefulness of the two? Oh, I just I just like having the split view because. Um, like for instance, on in this small one over here, I'm gonna have the. Uh, my intention is to have the real server running. Ah, uh, I see. That makes sense. So I don't. I mean, it just. I find the split view a little easier than just switching back and forth between tabs. I see. So this is the exact same thing as tabs. You just see them both yeah. at once. Yeah. Cool. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah. Okay. So gem install Rails is is running now. Do install now. Yep. It won't take too <laughs> long. Six gems later. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is what this is where it's at. Once you've got it all working, though, there you go. All right, so a million things installed. Yeah, and I can never remember if it's skip test unit like that or if it's what. <laughs> um. Path. You're doing this in a Dropbox I'm folder? I'm confused. <laughs> You're doing this in Dropbox? That's wacky. Uh, yeah, I have my web, my web reader Dropbox folder. Wow. Um, uh, let's do which, which uh, rails, maybe. It won't find it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that should not be the, um, shouldn't be what? 
Well, I mean that's the that's the system path to Rails on the system. That's not through um to Bundler. So it looks like we're gonna do the setup, dear listener. Uh, I bet I have to do rehash. Yeah. Uh, this bit me hard when I was trying to do it. There we go. <laughs> so I, I love when stuff like this happens, especially with an audience, because it's classic. <laughs> so can you explain? Like an idiot. That's classic, though. It's like it's it's this stuff that makes things hard. It's like uh, I remember, like the first book I wrote, I was like, "This is going to be for absolute noobs." And at the very beginning, I explained how CSS worked, and it wasn't even a book about CSS. Yeah. Because simple stuff like that just kills you. It's like one yeah, little well, every- thing that everybody forgets to tell you. Because you just do it once a million years ago, and then it's all set up. But if you don't tell people that, then they're just like, they're lost. Yeah, so anyway. exactly. Like every every um, every Rails developer out there is laughing at me now. But like you said, it's <laughs> it's it, like, like you said, it's something you do once a million years ago, and then you never think to do it again. So. Right. So explain what just happened. Uh, what just happened was. My stepmother came online, so I'm turning off ADM. Um, <laughs> no, what, what just happened was uh, I had installed I had installed Ruby and got all that set up, and I'd been working on Rails apps, but they had um, uh, actually had Rails included in those in those applications already, like mm-hmm. in the in the vendor folder. Yeah. So um, I hadn't actually installed Rails on my system, so just now I installed the Rails. Uh, Jim and its 25 apparent dependencies. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, then since I'm using uh, um, RB, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it, like the RB environment yeah. there yeah. To, to manage my Ruby versions, um, that's got a rehash command you have to run that, that does some, some recompile magic when you install. Um, you have to run that anytime you install Jim's that include binaries. Yeah, which is... Which is like super. It's not confusing, but it's like super. There's no way you're gonna know it. So I'm super. I'm glad that that just happened because it repeatedly bit me when I was playing around with this. Every single time I did gem install whatever, and I'm like, it didn't install. And then I'd be like, oh wait a minute, maybe I have to run rehash. <laughs> oh, there it worked. It happened to me like five times. Yeah. So run rehash. Yeah, it's it's very rare that I've had to. <laughs> yeah, it's very rare that I've had to actually run uh, run rehash. So I yeah, I tend you, to forget about. I've got a brand it. new computer, so yeah, yeah, exactly. So all right, so so you did that. Yes, I did that, and out. I created created my um, Kilo app. And how'd you do that? Uh, with just the um, Rails new Kilo, and I'm skipping test unit because I'm going to use RSpec. Okay. So, so. command is Rails new Kilo. Skip test unit. Okay, cool. Yep. And that does what? And that creates and then, directory. As you can see here, it's created created all this stuff. Your Let's see. No, your your basic app setup. Um not seeing it on the screen yet. So, so okay, so Rails new kilo. Wait. Hold on a second. I think I got some lag on the screen. Okay, so it's showing a big list of create Yeah. Yada yada yada. So if you go into, uh, if you CD into the key, it created a kilo directory. If you CD in there and do an LS, it'll show you the top level. Yeah, and you get to you get to experience all my typos. <laughs> Fortunately <laughs> for you, that it's it's running way behind. So, all right. So LS. So you see the. All right. So do you, for people who aren't Rails developers, which I assume Rails developers aren't watching this because they already know how to do this. Yeah, they're, they're, unless they're watching it for a good laugh. <laughs> Dev comedy. So we've got a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, can you do ls space minus la? Thanks. Yeah. Um. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, 
maybe you could like quickly run, you know, do the greatest hits of the stuff that's in here. Like, what's gem file? Okay, like your your gem file contains your list of all of your gems that the application is going to use, mm-hmm. and you can you can include um, like globally, or you can group them by um, production environment or by the uh, development environment. All right, so will that be empty right development now? Development test. Um, it is uh, has a few things by default, but it's mostly empty. Okay, and then we're going to put it. The, that's the first thing. One of the first things we're going to do is put some stuff into it. Okay, cool. So, in gem file dot lock is what. Uh, that's the that's uh, automatically gets generated when you run bundle. It's kind of like an expanded version of the gem file. It just includes all of all of the gems that you've put in your gem file plus any dependencies. Uh, so you don't need to touch so, it ever. Right, right. You you never ever need to touch that. Okay. Read me rake file. What's that? Uh, rake file contains all of your rake tasks, um, which are just little um, helpers that you can run from the command line, various various tools, and there are there are several included by default, and you can you can go in and write your own too if you want to. Okay, and they do things like or this, that's like the DB mining. Man, and stuff. Yeah, they manage things like setting up the database and you can Scaffling. viewing routes. And, okay, so command line yeah, and you can command line scripts. Um, yeah, okay, so you can you can run that rake and there's a get a list of rake tasks there. So and so what by so rake dash t by default reads that file. It looks for a file called rake file in that directory. Yeah, what? yeah, and it'll output the um the the tasks defined in that rake file. Oh, cool. I'm not seeing it on the screen yet, but it's probably just laggy. And now it looks like it says Saki space minus T. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds good, actually. It does, doesn't it? Um, okay, you need so, alcohol after this. Yeah, seriously. So, okay, so the, and the next up is app. That's the directory of all our files. Mm-hmm. So that's... All the uh, app files, yeah. Yeah, config, we probably will go through that a lot. We don't worry about that. Uh, DB. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things we're going to set in config. We have to set um, a couple initializers and that sort of stuff. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I'm sure um, we'll look at that. Yeah. DB is, in this case, contains uh, all of our, our all of our migrations, and in this case, it also contains our, our test, our development databases, since we're just using SQLite. Cool. For, yeah. for testing purposes. Yep. I actually love that about, about Rails, is that it will do that by default, so you can actually get started without having to muck around with setting up a database server. It's, yeah, uh, it's so awesome. Um, what's the doc folder? Um, that that is for uh, auto-generated documentation. Mm-hmm. If you want to do that and and want to comment things in such a way that you can then do auto-generated docs. Gotcha. So it's like a PHP document or. Yeah, I've. Um, to be honest, I've never done it so. <laughs> I your, your code self-documenting. It doesn't need to be separately. Exactly. No, we have. That's what Happy Docs is for. <laughs> yeah, your documentation should be done before you build. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. True. Uh, okay. So now the next one, I, I don't have any questions about what it is, but I do want to ask you how mm-hmm. you pronounce it. The lib. I say lib too, but I've heard lots of people say the lib directory. Oh, because it's short for library. Library. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that not, just said, that just sounds. It sounds weird. Sounds weird. Yeah. It's the libder. It's the libder. Yeah. The... <laughs> so I'm imagining the libder has a bunch of stuff that you don't touch. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't think I've added anything, any, any additional libraries in this. And I know in um. Yeah, you know, and some second, yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's nothing in it that we need to mess with on on this one. Cool. And then log, obviously, that's uh, where all the output logs go, I assume. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And public, that's where you put in and public s- is static files like static assets. Oh. Yes, like CSS, or JavaScript. That's not going to be dynamic. Actually, actually, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Those go in app. Those go in app assets or in uh, vendor assets. Oh, okay. If you if you want to use if you want to use like the um the Rails asset pipeline to compile your CSS or CoffeeScript or no. you know, like your SAS or CoffeeScript or what have you, then 
you can put them in, in the app assets or um, vendor assets, mm-hmm. depending, or, or, you know, if you'd like, if you just have regular CSS that you just want to drop in, you can put it in the public directory. There's no reason you couldn't. But yeah, see, I'm old school. I, personally, I personally, yeah, yeah, personally I just drop everything in assets. Yeah. And public directory is ends up being for, like, image uploads and that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Oh, okay. So I thought I knew something. I already already proved it out. <laughs> um, okay, so then script. What's in there? Script. I haven't looked at script in a long time. Script is all of the like all of, all of the Rails, various Rails generators and, and Rails scripts and stuff. Okay. And then so it's really nothing. Nothing yeah, to touch. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's really nothing you have to mess with. All um, right, cool. Or nothing you I mess don't even with think anyway. I've looked, Yeah, I don't even think I've looked at it in like since like version two <laughs> okay. of Rails. I don't even think, I don't even think I've looked at any of the files because it's just it's not. You know, they're just scripts for for Rails to do, you know, Rails generated and things, and just not something you need to worry about much. Gotcha. All right, cool. And then temp, I scratch area for whatever. I assume. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then vendor, what do you, what goes in there? Vendor has um, if you're if you're installing if you're bundling Rails with the application itself, so that you don't have to have Rails installed on the server you're deploying to, mm-hmm. or and if you also if you're doing and doing the same with with other gems as well, or dropping in third party libraries, um, like third party third party assets that you. Want to include um, you know, all all of the all of that stuff just goes into goes into vendor directory. Okay. But we won't be using that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. So that's just quick topology of the the top level directly. So so all right. Um, what is the first thing you do once you've got all that set up? First thing I do once I've got all that set up is open my editor. Fun. <laughs> Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is set up the gem file. Wait, we have to brag about editors first. Oh, we do. Okay. Yeah. What do you have here? Uh, this is Sublime Text 2. This is Sublime Text 2, yes. All right, excellent. I'm a huge fan now that you've converted me to it from TextMate. <laughs> yeah, I hear the um, like the, the newer open source version of TextMate is pretty good. Mm. Um, like a lot a lot better than, than the first version of TextMate, but I've, you know, I had already switched to Sublime by that point, so I never even bothered. Right. Yeah, it's there's some great features. It's if if you haven't uh, forced yourself to learn it, you'll be happy if you do. TextMate fans. Yeah. Bunch of great features. Um, okay, cool. So we are looking at the gem file. Yes, we are. Excellent. And, and I'm going to include some gems. But before we do that. Okay. Uh, there's all this stuff in here already. Yes, there is. That you questions. Didn't, you didn't write. Did, did you write it? No. no. Okay. So it's there by default. Right. So there's like 38 lines of stuff. So most of the comments. It's, it's uh, yeah. So what do we need to know about it, if anything? Um, at the top is our source for gems, and that's just going to be um, just rubygems.org is where we get our gems from. Okay. And if you're installing if you're installing a gem from a different source, then you can specify the source when you specify the gem. Mm-hmm. Um, Does that Rails affect ver- the? Does that affect the – that doesn't affect anything when you're doing, like, gem install the command line. That's just for this application when it's loading, right? Um, uh, when you run from the gem install from the command line, it will use the gem source to find in your – like, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're running it from a directory that has a gem file in it, it will use the source to find in your – well, if, you, if she's running gem install, no, it doesn't. Okay. But if you're running bundle – if you're installing gems by a bundle, which I'll show you in a few minutes, okay. then it uses what's defined in your in your gem file. So, like, if you wrote your own gems and you had them hosted, like, whatever on kellyshaver.com, yeah, you could put that in here. Yeah, well, you wouldn't. You probably wouldn't change the source at the top because you know, majority of your gems are going to be from Ruby Gems, but like, you can you can specify it out like out here past your past your gem. You can specify the source. Okay. And then we have um, <laughs> making things difficult when you like 
What's this boilerplate code that you everything. never read do? <laughs> I told what? you I was going to – what is this all this boilerplate code that you've never read do? <laughs> I told you it was going to take forever. Yeah, that's, we may not get through this. We have to, may have to do it. May have to do a series. Yes, which is fine. Yeah, I know. You know, I didn't realize how dumb I was. <laughs> so there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in here. I overestimated you. Yeah, it's just I'm so used to I'm just so used to looking at it. I just don't think about it. I know that's and that's the problem with all yeah. of the things you go on. Like you go to these tutorials online, and they all gloss over everything. Do this, now do that, and then this happens. But what else? All this other stuff. Like, why is it there? <laughs> all right. So, all right. All right, yeah. Um, and then the next stuff down there is our um, all of our asset management for um, compiling CoffeeScript and SAS and all that stuff. And we don't really need it for this, but I'm not going to remove it mm -hmm. just because. <laughs> Vim's used only for assets not required in production environments by default. So translate that to English. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Jim's use only for assets are not required in production environments by default. Um, what that means is, uh, if you're whenever you run the app in the in um, the development environment, uh -huh. um, it will it will compile um, all of all of your all of your assets and everything sort of uh, get included on the fly. Um, oh, so not performant, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and when you run it in, when you run it in production, uh, when you run it in production, all of all of your assets are pre-compiled before um, before the app like launches. Yeah. So okay, so this is just like a convenience thing. Yeah. During development, all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you'll you'll still need them there because they will um, they will compile all of your all of your CSS and and JavaScript do get the it just means they get compiled before. Like but when your app's in production mode, they get they get compiled before. Um, like like they're compiled as static assets. They're not like oh the app runs and, and compiles things as it's as it's running. Even if like, you're not yeah, using like, SAS and CoffeeScript. Um. <laughs> like, you're like uh, shut up! I don't know. Uh, shut up, John. <laughs> it's so confusing. Like people don't realize how confusing this is. Like what the hell does that do? <laughs> <laughs> no, right, what I would what, <laughs> what you could I mean what you could do, you could you could just have these available in your development environment and then run um, like assets pre compile. There's a there's a, a rig test to pre compile the assets. And then you wouldn't need to have these gems in production. Yeah, so let's just gloss over this. It's like <laughs> I mean like that right there is really confusing. But we don't need to explain it because it just For this. works, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just move on. We're not going to use it for this anyway. These are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> like some of the some of the stuff is like I know it, but I haven't had to articulate it to anyone. So. Yeah. No. I no. I believe me. This is going to be painful. <laughs> we're <laughs> just getting started. <laughs> we're one file in. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. We're not even in the config yet. Yeah. Can Can I add gems now? Please. <laughs> okay. And okay. first, I'm going to add Rabble, which is a Ruby API builder language. It's just a little a little DSL for building uh, building view files um, for, for JSON and XML response objects. Cool. And then OJ is another gem I'm using, and that is that's just a JSON parser that uh, Rabble uses. Okay. So okay, I'm ready for a stupid question. Sure. I thought this managed your dependencies. Is this is it, or or is this file the file that manages your dependent? Like I like I thought it was. Uh, do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you didn't include OJ and Rabble depended on it, wouldn't it just include it by itself? Um, I don't believe it does because there are multiple different JSON parsers that it can use. So I believe you have to pick one. So you want a specific one? Yeah. Okay, and then and then your. Your famous parameters typo exists on line eleven, I think. Oh uh, yes. There you go. So strong parameters. Yeah. What's that gem do? That is, um, it is a replacement for the attribute accessible or attribute accessible 
um, that's built into Rails currently for uh, mass assignment protection. And it's going to be the it's going to be the default in Rails four, and it gives you um, uh, a fair bit more flexibility uh, when defining um, accessible attributes in your um, in your controllers. Huh. Well, maybe that'll make more sense when we get to controllers. Yeah, it'll it'll make more sense when we go through it. Cool. Someday when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. And then okay, B, uh, so bcrypt. Yeah, just for because I'm just doing some very basic authentication rather than using there's there's a ton of existing authentication libraries, but I'm just making a, a very simple one okay. for this. Interesting. So, so in the past, uh, you've mentioned um, what's that one? The, the device. Device is that what it is device? And that's yeah. based on another one that you also mentioned before. Uh, device is based on it's a, a fork of oh, what is it called? I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. I don't remember. Anyway, but you've mentioned it before. It, it basically handles like the all the like authentication, password reminder, all that stuff. Yeah. Based on rack. For rack applications, I mean. I oh, device um uses Warden. Warden, that's the one. A piece of middleware for um security. That is exactly what I was thinking. But we're not going to use that here. So you're just going to use it. You're going to kind of roll your own. I'm just going to just going to roll my own little simple thing. And that stuff's for web apps, right? It's not for. Um, you could use device for this because it includes um, includes OAuth and uh, it can do token based authentication. So I mean, yeah, I have a I have a Rails web app that I'm using that also has an API component, and it's all it's all device. Okay. Cool. All right, so now what are you doing? What's the group? Group development. Yeah, these are just the uh, the gems that are only only um, used in development and test environments. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then I think that is everything we need. So we're going to use R, in so in development, we've got R spec Rails, we've got Factory Girl Rails, which I know is from uh, the ThoughtBot gang. Yeah. I, it's not totally clear to me what that does, but I know you like it. And then what's yeah, Faker? Yeah, I'll show you soon. Mm -hmm. um, Faker is, it's just a um, little gem for generating random test data. Mm. <laughs> That's cool. Um, okay, cool. So, all right. So, is that uh, that's that's our gem file for this? Yes. Excellent. So, I I made ten lines of code take twenty minutes. <laughs> I'm good like that. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> Winning. Yes. All right. Excellent. And, and now that we have have our gems listed in our gem file, let's install them. How do we do that? We will run bundle install. And that will run bundle. Bundle being one of the things that was um, it, in the setup. In the setup on that blog post. And bundle is. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to ask you. Oh, yeah, bundle is um, for managing and installing things and running. Yeah, and you can you can run you can run things through bundle. Like for instance, I have uh, the other application I'm I'm working on right now uses an older version of Rails that's installed to the vendor directory for that um, for that project. So mm -hmm. I can just whenever I need to run a Rails command, I can just um, prefix it with bundle exec, and it runs. It uses the local version. It uses the the version of Rails specific to that application rather than the system version and, and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So bundles handy for managing all of that stuff yeah it sounds like overkill but obviously it's because i it's to me but it's because i'm not working on multiple rails applications on the same machine yeah but uh yeah it's there's like so many so many it's like there's bundle and yum and 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 
you know, like brew Strike. and yes. gem install. There's yeah. like so many. Like asset management is just, you know, massive amounts of things. Yeah. There are options, but yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm going to run bundle install. Okay. So I'm seeing, I'm still seeing Sublime. Are you in the terminal? Yeah, I'm in the terminal. Yeah, I'm still seeing Sublime. Wow. But it should be fine because you're recording your screen, not mine, so that's cool. You still see Sublime? Yeah, it's okay though. Go ahead. Keep going. That's really laggy. So there we go. All right. I think it, I think it was just not enough of the screen had refreshed. All right, so it's so you just ran bundle install, mm -hmm. and it's looking at the gem file in that directory, yeah. right? So then it installed like ten million things. Yeah, it's like this is the stuff that's already installed that we're using, and then it's installing, installing all the rest. <laughs> I see. Okay, and do you need to rehash again or anything? No, or? All right. no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Famous last words. But... Right. <laughs> TM. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so 10 million things just got installed, so that's pretty cool. Yes. Um, all right, so uh, I feel like and we might be getting to closer to the fun part. Yeah, we are. And I'm going to go ahead and, and actually start the server. Check that out. So you're jumping into the other terminal window, I assume. Yes. And running Rails S, which is one of my mm -hmm. favorite things about the more modern frameworks. Having the having the server built in, yeah, being able to server built in exactly, being able to CD into a directory and just start hosting it, uh, yeah, it's a real real drag that uh, in the PHP world that there's nothing quite that smooth. Actually, I think isn't there doesn't Larval have? I read a somewhere. I, I read somewhere that there was a. There was a way to do it with PHP, and I tried it, and there was something underwhelming about it, and I didn't stick with it. Mm. I can't remember what it was. Yeoman has one, but it's like just it's not PHP. It's just like HTTP, so it'll host like yeah. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and yeah, I think it's Python based. Mm. Or, or, or you know, Yeoman is probably Node. Uh, they've been changing a lot, so I'm not sure. There's like a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff going on over there. I'm yeah. waiting for them to settle down before I spend any time with it. Yeah, there's there's one real popular one that uses a Python server, and then there's, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so so Rails is running, and mm -hmm. it's on uh, port three thousand. So if you yes. go to localhost colon three thousand in your browser of choice, it will show you the splash page for the Rails app. Yes. Which is what we're looking at. Yes, and the first thing I'm going to do is delete that. <laughs> Because we don't need it, so. That is located in. It's in the public, it's the index HTML in the public directory. Yeah. So I wasn't completely wrong. If you were going to have, like, a CSS. Right, no, no, you weren't completely wrong at all. Okay, that's a first. Like, you could put, you could put static HTML and things in there. Yeah. And, I mean, you, of course, you can put JavaScript and CSS and everything. But if you want to manage all of those through the Rails asset pipeline, then you have to put them in, in the assets folder and not the public folder. Right. And that would uglify them and compile yeah. them. And, you know, all yep. Stuff, so. yeah. yep. Exactly. So the routing just, must, routers must check the public folder first for yeah. matching. Okay. Yeah. And actually, you see, now that I've, now that I've deleted the index HTML, we get a we get a routing error because the file doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> so, gotcha. Uh, what should we do next? Should we generate a person? Um, yeah. Do we, well, whatever. Yes. So the yes, do we do person. models first, or we do? Uh, I'm going to start with the model. We could we could just do like the scaffold, and it would create the model and the controller and all the tests and. And all and all that for us, but it ends up creating a lot of extra things that we don't need. So I'm just gonna just gonna do the model and the controller individually, and mm. then I may end up just like pasting in some tests just to save time. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Sounds good. So what directory do we go into? 
We go. Y'all let me open. No, you're in. I'm seeing Sublime still. Yeah, we go back to our command line and we will do Rails G model person and we'll define some values. Is it? <clears throat> I don't know if I'm seeing it wrong or if you typed it wrong, but it says Grails or Oops. Gales. There we go. So Rails G, what's G? Uh, it's short for generate. Oh, cool. So Rails G. You could type out generate, but. Nah, who wants to do that? That's like S. S is short for server, I guess. Yep. So Rails G model. So you're telling you want to generate a model for person with first name string, last name string, email string, password <laughs> string, password <laughs> salt. Oh, fancy. Yes. You're salting and everything. Yeah. I'm getting hungry just thinking about all this hash, <laughs> all the hashes and salts. Let me change that. Change it to calorie budget. Calorie budget for the day. That's your limit for the day. Yeah, and we're not really doing anything with it at this point, but. Mm -hmm. Don't hate me because they're not in alphabetical order. <laughs> I'm doing them as I think of them. <laughs> and as they're listed on my cheat sheet, I will not lie. Excellent. All is forgiven. Yes. <laughs> and, okay. If, All right, I cool. Don't so you've see what that's that. done yet. But. Yep, it says invoke active record, create a database migration, which... <laughs> This is the initial creation of the database anyway. Yep. That's so this is this is DB migrations are like a topic unto themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm I'm a convert, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Very cool. Um, create models person. So it created a, a person.rb file in app models. Invoked R spec. So it created some test stuff, I guess. Yes, it did. It created Created a factory and a, a, a model spec. Excellent. And I will just show you real quick. So jumping back to Sublime. Yep. This is the database migration that was created for us. Mm. Fairly significant lag, but I do see it now. So, okay. So, okay. Uh, excellent. And so now that didn't do anything yet. That didn't make a no. database, right? No, it didn't didn't make the database yet. Yeah, this is the code that's going to make the database. Yes. Cool beans. Yes, and here is our Okay, so inside of app person model. There's a bunch of folders inside of app that we'll mm -hmm. go through over time, and models is the one we're looking at now. So model view controller. Yeah. This is where we define what the, you know the properties of objects. Yes. <clears throat> and so attribute accessible. Yeah, we're gonna delete this because we're using strong parameters instead. Interesting. Okay. But question. What do you want to do next? Do you want to do the tests first and then then um, code to the tests or do you want to just go ahead and dive into the model and throw the tests in later? Um, how would we dive into the model without the tests? With the with the web interface? Uh, no, I mean just like start writing writing the, the code for the model. Uh, yeah, I would do that. Get something up and running? Yeah, let's do that first. Yeah, and actually I just remembered um, a, a change I have to make since we're using strong parameters instead of attribute accessible. Mm -hmm. So I need to go into config initializers. Is there initializers? I can never remember. Oh, appli no, application config. And active record whitelist attributes. No, comment that out. And what it, what's all that? Um, this, these are our various, various application config settings that are, are set at runtime. Mm -hmm. And I am the config, 
Uh, active record whitelist attributes equals true. I'm just I'm commenting that out because it's used by the attribute accessible, and since we're not using that, if we if we don't comment that out, uh, we won't be able to access any of our uh, model parameter model variables. Hmm. So, That'd be bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really frustrating until you remember that you forgot to do that. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So what is a uh, what is the what does this need to look like? This needs to look like there's actually there's a few things that go in here. We're gonna I'm gonna start by requiring a couple of things that we'll end up using. I'm gonna require bcrypt and secure random, which is one of one of those one of those included by default or available by default. You just have to include it. You know, you, you don't need a gem. There's not a gem for it or anything. Mm. And we're gonna use those to generate the um, uh, the hashes. Mm -hmm. Okay various hashes that we'll use for things. And then okay, we're gonna need to gonna need to give it um set up a relationship with entries, but we'll do that later. Okay. And then I've got a rather annoying um yeah, rather annoying regular expression here that I'm probably just gonna open up in something else and copy in. <laughs> <laughs> for what validating like email address? Email, yeah. yeah. I thought there was a type that I thought there was that that was built in. No. Um. There's there like, may be. <laughs> yeah, because there's like uh, the thing you're about to do, which is, you know, essentially you're setting like the the uh, it's kind of like setting data types in a SQL database where like, you know, only certain things are allowed, like a float or whatever timestamp or whatever. And uh, if something doesn't conform to the format, then gets rejected. So yeah. here we're defining it in code. The, the regular expression. There you go. And um, there are, I don't think there's an active record, like there's a base validation for emails in, in the active record validations. I'm sure there are, there are plugins you can, you can include mm -hmm. that give you that, you know, validate format as, e or, you know, as email. Type of deal. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd seen it, but I don't. It doesn't mean that it works or that it's <laughs> that it wasn't calling something that they had custom built. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's write some validations. Never spell. So uh, probably spelled that wrong. Yes, mm, one L. So uh, it's so the syntax is a little wonky here. Mm -hmm. So it's like yeah, like I could put this all in one line. It's just easier to break it up. Is this one of those? I think like, it's easier to read. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Whatever you think, but but what is you know like. There's like a lot. Is there a significant white space here, or what's the deal? Are these per, like parameters with no parentheses, or? Uh, no, the the white space is not significant. It's all just to to make it a little easier to read. Mm -hmm. um, but validates yeah. is expecting a single parameter followed by an array or or like tuples of. Yeah, I mean, like you could you could put like validates and then open parentheses and then all of your parameters and close your parentheses. Mm -hmm. But a lot of like the, the the general convention in Rails is to to leave them out. Mm -hmm. But it's validates is basically a function that accepts yeah. an arbitrary number right. of parameters. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Calorie button. And this, oh, we want to allow blank, not allow bank. <laughs> and we're gonna so that way so it's not it's not required. But if it's there, we want to make sure it's an integer. Mm -hmm. 
and if someone tries to insert dollar bills into it, we're going to accept it. Yeah, them. if someone tries to insert dollar bills or, or, or words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then, Numericality, that is Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> Why didn't they just call it numberishness? <laughs> numberishness. I always want to put numerosity instead. <laughs> <laughs> and Which I don't know if it's an actual word, but... <laughs> it is now. And title. Presence. How's that different yes. than allow blank? Uh, presence is... I suppose you could do allow blank false. Um, okay. Same basic idea, though. Uh, no, actually, allow blank is... It's going to validate when it's coming in from, from whatever set of parameters it's being passed. Presence will um, determine whether or not it's present within... Within the object model, like whether if the object model or even if the object model already exists and it's already defined, but you're not passing it this particular time, then presence will go ahead and pass. I don't know that I explained that well. Uh, I know I don't understand what you said. <laughs> I'm not going to say you didn't explain <laughs> it well, though. You want me to back up and try again? Um, maybe when we we could once we get to an example, you can say okay. like if if I had put allow blank, then this would fail. Okay. Okay, uniqueness makes sense. Okay, format. There you go. Yeah. Using your regular expression. Now, do uh -huh. you say regex or regex? Uh, I just... Uh, what do I say? Yeah. I say regex. Yeah, me too. I heard someone say regex the other day. Did you punch them? I tried to, but it, they were, it was a recording, <laughs> so I just hurt my hand on the screen. I keep on coming across these people who pronounce the shortened version based on the long pronunciation. It's like, yeah, what's, what's with that? I don't know. It's funny, though. Doing the podcast, it raises all these issues. Yeah, it, or, It's or stuff you never say. say. Normally, you just type it. So. Yeah. <laughs> you don't talk to people about this stuff. Okay, this you're about to do my favorite thing about Ruby, which is oh, yeah, it's that yeah, defining an array with uh, defining a range with dot dot with dots. Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? Yes. <sighs> oh, screw up my screw up my in, my my unconventional indentation. <laughs> So yeah, so so audio listeners are probably pulling their, they're probably hung probably, up right now. Yeah, probably so. But um, what's happening, s sort of, actually, it's not. I was going to say slowly. It's not that slow, but what's happening That's, is it's slow because I'm typing slow and we're talking through it. But. Yeah, it's not easy. But what's happening is um, Kelly's defining the 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 properties of the person object, but also the validation that goes against each property. So like an email has to be formatted against this uh, regular expression and you know the first name has to be within a certain number of characters and the last name same thing. It has to be there. And, and if you've worked in, like me, if you worked like a lot with SQL databases or other databases, this is the kind of stuff you, it, you know, it's super tedious to define in the database and as middleware and frameworks have gotten smarter and smarter it becomes it feels weirder to be putting that much logic in the database and you kind of want to you kind of want the database to be this dumb repository of data and put your logic where all the logic is so this is this is really attractive yeah and i'm an idiot i've been using brackets here when i should have been using curly braces all along so uh even i should have caught that Just talking and talking and not paying attention. Yes. And rubbing your tummy and patting your head. Yes. And chewing gum. Walking. <laughs> thinking about on how much I have to pee. Dictionary. Again? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, God. <laughs> Numerosity. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Okay. 
So there is our, our validations. And alphabetical, thank you. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and there there are a few more things we need to do in the model. Um, just some, some initial setup stuff that we need to do when records are created. So I'm gonna gonna go ahead and add those. Mm -hmm. Um some Okay, so before create, that's like a mm -hmm. keyword, right? That's like a yeah, a, a, it's, like a, a, it's a, a filter that gets run before, after validation, before the record is saved. Okay. Um. Okay, before create, and then what's create access token? That's a method that we're going to write here in just a few minutes. That's a method. Yeah, it's a method we're going to write. I, so this, this Ruby token syntax, I think that's what they're called, mm -hmm. tokens, with the colon at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, you can use it for any identifier, I guess, then. Yeah, I don't... I, I to be, I'm completely honest. I don't remember all the ins and outs. I just just know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm using them to identify um this, their model methods. Mm -hmm. Okay. That and we're you, about to define. And you can do two before creates. Mm-hmm. And they're run in the order that you define them. Yeah, I could put them all in the same line and just separate them by a comma, but I just find it easier to read like this. Mm -hmm. It's a little more redundant, but which some people probably hate, but. So, all right, now I'm going to ask you another question you probably never thought okay. about, which is what's the difference between before create and before save? Um, before create happens before the record is created. Before save happens before every save action. So, like, when you're, um, like, updating a record. Oh, okay. So oh, if you wanted to check every single time. Use before save. Okay. Yeah. And there, there are all kinds of these filters you can do before create, before save, after save, after create. Um, before update, before delete, after delete, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so these are kind of like uh, stored kinda procedures. Like callbacks. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I, that's funny. That's funny. But, they don't feel like callbacks to me. They feel like, because callbacks to me are very asynchronous. I imagine these are not asynchronous. No, no, they're not. Okay, so it feels like a stored procedure, like triggers. And mm, yeah, SQL. yeah, I guess that's a, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, which is like that. anybody who's ever written a store procedure is like, and looks at this, it's like, thank you, God, for, <laughs> yeah. for inventing Rails because <laughs> writing store procedures in SQL is like the worst. So the, I guess those are a feature of Active Record. Yeah, that's cool. They are kind of. I, I understand what you mean with the uh, callbacks because they're kind of. It's kind of like listening to events. Yeah, yeah, kind, kind of. of, kind of feels as soon like as that. this when this event happens, mm -hmm. or all right, yeah, so in this case, this before thing. this event happens. Right when it's about to happen. So so now you're defining the function or the method create access token. Yep. I'm wondering if I have a typo here somewhere because it didn't. The auto indentation didn't do its thing. So I'm wondering if I have a typo here somewhere. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. It's all part of the education, seeing how to find bugs. Oh, it's because there's no call in front of create access token, maybe? No, there's not supposed to be. That was oh. a typo. <laughs> okay. Cut the second one. Yeah. Okay, so now we're defining the methods. We're doing so. We're doing our setting a calorie budget before create. What do we, what's the uh, hmm? What's the rule there on which like what are you going to put in here? Oh, uh, one set calorie budget. Mm -hmm. We're going to make it default to 2000 unless how oh, also so cool. It's already set to something else. So self is yeah, the, the, the record model that's instance. about to be yeah. created. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's the instance. 
boy, is that nice to look at. <laughs> it's like so English language-y. And this is more cosmetic than functional, but I like to downcase the email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people that people that put capitalization in their email address should be yeah should be punished. Okay, so self dot email. So this is while you're doing that. This is like, I'm sure we'll see this shortly, but it's like as the, like, where's, where are these parameters? Like when you instantiate uh, an, a person object, you like pass mm -hmm. these values in somehow or whatever, or it just all happen automatically. It it pretty much just all happens automatically. I yeah, mean, you will you will create you'll create the objects in the controllers. Right. Yeah. So that that would be good to be interesting to look at next because it's like, okay, great, this all makes sense. But then it's like, and then your brain's like, well, wait a second, how do I how do I instantiate one of these bad bears? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll that'll all come into play in the controller. Cool. Um, no, I'm an idiot. Which <laughs> is plainly obvious by now, I'm sure. <laughs> like Einstein um, compared to me. Yeah. Okay, oh, this is a good one. So this is not purely cosmetic. So when the password comes in, Yes. You're saying what? If password, if password dot present. Yes, if the password is present, then. Not self password? No, because it's checking for the password parameter. And it's checking to, if it's present in the parameters array. That's. Trying to see where. Okay. I have to look up the syntax on this because I. Uh... Oh, that should be a double colon. So, if the parameters array being something that was passed to the person object as it was instantiated? Yes. Exactly. Mm. That's a very subtle difference between the previous ones. Yeah, it is. Okay, so you create a salt, and then you're going to apply it to the incoming password. Yep. Um... I have to look this up. F secret. I'm seriously getting hungry for an omelet. <laughs> you want some nice salty hash browns? Yes, totally. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. Test the model, or do you want to do the person controller? Um, we're we're at like an hour and fifteen. Or do you want to stop here and do the next? Um, all right. So let's hold that off because we're like like way way long. Yeah. And pick it up from the uh, person model next time. 
Okay. All right. I've so a, I've got a typo in the person model. <laughs> Where? I had B E C Y P T instead of like B crypt. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool so let's uh let's pause here now that we're done with the person model and uh pick it up next week with uh either some tests or some controller maybe probably both we'll probably have time for both yeah since it, I, I dragged you through so much setup <laughs> yeah and the controller should go pretty quickly excellent well no i can controller and then a couple of, of um View files. Well, yeah, I would have thought model would go pretty quickly. Yeah, too. you just wait. I'll but, yeah, <laughs> you'll come up with something. But, exactly. But yeah. Anyway, I've I've done some some fiddling around here at the end, so you may need to like chop off bits of the video or what have you. But we'll see. Yeah. All right, dear listener, that's our show for this week. I'm Jonathan Stark, and I'm Kelly Shaver, and we hope you join us again next week for the Niche Podcast. Bye. <laughs>